Hello everyone, Rocco coming at you. Uh, we are taking a drive into town. This is going to be my second drive on 10.8.1 today. I uh, saw the first video that was um, of Salutum. Um, I did, that was my first drive on 10.8. As I said in that video, I did not see any differences. Um, unfortunately, the drive itself was actually worse. I don't think that was version over version. I think that was strictly just, it was a more complex situation. Um, that being said, um, there's a lot of changes going to happen in the future versions. We're going to see if there's anything on this route. And if there's nothing on this route, um, I'm only going to do one other drive this week. And uh, that is a unique drive that I haven't been able to do in several versions. So I'll be able to get that one recorded and see if there's anything different there. Uh, but as always, right here, it doesn't slow down. Wait a second. Okay, I thought it was a phantom brake. Uh, it, needed, it needs to start slowing down to about 40 right now, then 35, and it said it just slows down. Honestly, about 25 to 30, 25 would probably be about right, mile an hour. I'd say that'd be just right. Now, that's the thing, see right here, it goes all the way to the right and then towards back over. Then at, this actually is one of the better times it's ever done this. So I press the accelerator to get it to go a little bit quicker because um, there is a truck behind me and full cell driving is not capable yet of adjusting for oncoming vehicles on the highway. It either it needs to slow way down and get behind them or it needs to speed up like I just did and get in front of them. My preference is to speed up. Uh, because the, they're actually not going any faster than I want to go, which is 70. Uh, if not, a little bit slower than that. But uh, if I maintain that speed, we'll intersect at the same time. And of course, obviously, that won't end well. So I mainly lane changed here because I was catching up to this car in front of me far too quickly. And I didn't want to slow way down for that. We got some cars merging on here. Fortunately, they're going a little bit faster than I'm going, so it shouldn't be an issue. All right. Yeah, see, my car needed to slow down there sooner. It's mostly because the people on the merge merging in slowed down as they merged. Uh, I think it's just habit when you lit off the pedal or when you turn around to check your blind spot. Um, you end up putting it off the pedal and then of course you slow down. Um, but yeah, they should have kept on with speed as they were getting on the highway. Of course they slowed down and of course then I had to slow down as well. So I don't know if I mentioned this in previous videos, but if you can, if this is made out clear it's probably not because it's dark I have the snowflake symbol it is 36 degrees out and the battery is cold obviously because of that and because I'm at 28% state of charge um, I have full region um, even though I have the snowflake uh, that is an advantage in the winter time of staying at a lower state of charge since I work from home I never charge above 60 unless I'm going somewhere like long distance it's either gonna be 80% or 90% um, but the lower you are, uh, closer to 50 on your charge, you can get more region. And so living in the mountains, that is really quite critical to having good efficiency. And so it's really, uh, like even being this low is even more than 50%. At 50% you would have like a, still some region limit. Um, at least when I started I would. I'm gonna go ahead and train the car to go ahead and get over. It saw that car way up there and tried to swerve back. 
because I thought it, it timed, timed the intersection wrong. I thought it was going to do that, and I thought um, previous versions definitely would have jammed on the brakes for that. This version um, uh, did more of an evasive maneuver instead. Uh, so it's actually a good thing, uh, but it's obviously it would was way too um, cautious and uh, there was no reason it needed to swerve there but um, it did the right thing I'd say um, that's what they're trying to make it super human as Elon said um, it's just most more often than not it's just being overly cautious um, so back to why I did that manual lane change I'm trying to ch train the computer to do correct routes um, and so for this type of route uh, you're taking a right up here, you need to just stay in the right lane. And so then you're going to get over, you should turn on the blinker right here, and then the far right lane is my preference. Uh, you should just stay in this lane the whole way. Um, there are a lot of people, in, well not a lot, several people in here in the comments. Uh, if you're one of those, this is for you. Um, the I do not let the car do whatever it wants to do, uh, because I'm here we are all we are all here to train the car that that's literally it's, it's fun like it's good like everyone should let the car try what it's going to do and it's interesting and see how the computer mind behaves but long term as you, like after the you know the uh freshness wears off it's our job to train it the more we correct the more we disengage the more we intervene on areas where it's just not good the better it's going to become so if I manually lane change, or I disengage where it's doing a stupid route or something because map data is wrong, then I can report that, and it will get better over time. If I just let it do it, it's always going to think it's good. Like if you don't correct someone, yep, that should have, it was hesitant trying to brake for this. Uh, it went back and forth, and then, yeah, that should have braked sooner. Uh, but yeah, if you don't correct the car it's always going to do it wrong and so that's why it's important we get more people on the beta program because then more people will start correcting it and will fix those issues when other people don't want them to be fixed they just want to see what the car is going to do uh, it's important that we correct it I don't always do that um, keep keep me honest down in the comments uh, if I forget to report something that really should have been reported Phantom braking is about worthless to report the camera button. Please don't spam them. I'm pretty sure every one of these clips get manually reviewed by a person. They get auto-labeled by the computer. Um, and they then they get reviewed by a person. What was that about? I was looking at the road. And my hands, like, pulling down on the wheel. Anyways. Um, yeah, every one of these clips got auto-labeled. Um, with most of the stuff, and then a human looks at him like, okay, what was wrong with this clip? I assume they have um, acceleration data and all that stuff, uh, so they're going to be able to see phantom braking in the clip, and they can be like, okay, yeah, brake poorly or something, I don't know. But um, more importantly, record clips when it does something wrong by turning or routing or uh, obvious mistakes. Like, I have a feeling by the end of this year, most of the obvious mistakes should be gone. Like, like, I'd say, well, I don't know. Like, basically, like, if it ever runs into a curb again by next year, I'd be surprised. Um, all that stuff should be pretty good by the end of the year. Uh, it's going to be really good level three, uh, most likely by the end of the year. If they have more progress... Uh, this next year than they had in the previous year, which is most likely going to be the case. See, this road right here has somewhat poor lane lines, and it just breaks. Uh, it's not very confident on it. And in terms of differences so far with 10.8.1 versus 10.8, um, it made a few different cha uh, lane changes differently, like the main uh, red light uh, where's the double right on red uh, that was actually better it got in the far right lane I don't know why it's like moving the wheel left um, towards the car 
and so yeah I don't I don't like that it's done that a couple times even on 10.8 that's that behavior is the same between the two versions this road basically the same 10.8 added region for these type of braking uh, maneuvers uh, definitely definitely um, smooth oh it almost messed that up there's not even one version that messed this up I don't recall which one it is use the accelerator to continue okay I just tapped the accelerator I'm not pressing it right now Now turn right onto South King Street. So this is somewhat of a challenging turn right here because the, there's a hill. You can't hardly see the traffic coming. And there's a signs occluding the cars. So the, the, right now you can't see it. Now you can see the car. So now we're good to go. Now we're not good to go. So what it needs to do is start creeping up like right now. I'm gonna tap the accelerator. It's it's not gonna go. All right, now it's going. Okay, I'm having to press the accelerator. It's not gonna go. Okay. Why are you breaking still? <laughs> Obviously pissed this guy off right here. <laughs> I think they were trying to get in the lane I'm in right now. And then my car decided to get into that lane. See, stuff like that where it breaks after you go through the light, I'm like, why? Why is it making silly mistakes like that? Like, uh, <laughs> you know, um, those are the mistakes. Like, once it fixes all those things, I think I'm pretty confident most of that's gonna be fixed by the end of this year. That's what's gonna make it start being like usable and really like enjoyable to use, like all the time. And so again, do your disengagement drive. This is our uh, parking location right here. I don't expect it to go in here. But, um, yeah, everyone, this is a fantastic drive. Um, I don't think it really did anything worse or better than, um, than the previous update. Hmm, yep. I ran up over the curb. Ouch. That hurt. Oh. Can, can it not see? Yeah, it can't. Okay, well that sucks. Okay, <laughs> well, I, um, full self-driving and great human pilot did not. Okay, um, well I appreciate everyone watching. I will, uh, go off to where I need to go, and I'll see you in the next, next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.